so I've decided to enter the fray as one of the many pony analysts out there. This is the part where I would tell you about how I've spent my entire life overanalyzing things, and have so many thoughts to share, etc. And while these things may be true, all of them have been said before, and have been put better by such exceptional analysts as Digibrony, Brony Curious, and Theory Brony, among others. Therefore, I'm going to just dive straight into the analysis and hope my arguments speak for themselves, or at least provoke some interesting thoughts and debate from the community. My subject for this video is one that I feel has been underrepresented at the moment, the official comics. A cursory YouTube search for pony comics analysis, for example, yielded none of the desired results. Rather than an in-depth look at each issue, however, I have a more specific topic in mind to explore, or maybe more accurately, to criticise. And this is the Nightmare Forces plot device in the second arc of the Pony Comics. Now first let me clarify what I mean by a plot device. A plot device is commonly defined as an entity or object which exists in a literary work in order to advance the plot. In this case, the Nightmare Forces were invented in order for a plot involving Rarity's Fool and subsequent redemption to take place, while simultaneously allowing for a parallel of the Fool of her predecessor, Princess Luna. Now don't get me wrong, I loved the comics. The Nightmare Forces idea allowed for an interesting dramatic setup, with one of our beloved main six becoming a villain. Spike's relationship with Rarity, for example, was excellently explored through this device. However, let me ask this. For all that we may have gained through this device, what have we lost? The answer I have arrived at is that we have lost a great deal, in terms of both Rarity and Luna's characters, which through this device have become less complex. To illustrate this, I will look at how the introduction of the Nightmare Forces impacts upon Luna's character, and in doing so, will reflect the same observations of how they impact on rarities. To do so, I will be using a little literary theory concerning tragedy, and this will require some explanation of terms. In any tragic work, such as Shakespeare's King Lear or Sophocles' Oedipus Tyrannus, the main character of the piece is known as a tragic hero. The tragic hero always starts as a high-class individual, but is destined for tragedy due to their harmatia, or tragic flaw slash mistake. This fits well with Luna, as she is a princess, and we know that her bond with the moon was the source of her resentment, her flaw. Or alternatively, if mistake is taken, her attempting to fight Celestia and cause eternal night was her mistake. One of these things must be her harmatia, which caused her fall. But what is the point of this tragic fall? The answer lies in the tragic hero's anamnesis, or realisation of the truth. Through their fall, they are finally able to grasp a truth they could not before. In Luna's case, this is knowledge of the power of friendship, demonstrated to her in the main six's defeat of her in the second episode of season one, and reinforced by the defeat of Nightmare Rarity in the eighth comic. Friendship's triumphing over her dark power of hatred and fear allowed her to realise the true power of the former, and reject the falsity of the latter. The character development coming from her anamnesis is an integral part of Luna's character, and as she goes on to learn about the magic of friendship throughout the rest of her appearances, it becomes more and more important. The problem comes when the nightmare forces are added into the equation, as they rob Luna of her free will to make the choice to rebel. The importance of free will is something the main show picks up on when introducing the story of Luna's fool. One fateful day, the younger unicorn refused to lower the moon to make way for the dawn. The elder sister tried to reason with her, but the bitterness in the young one's heart had transformed her into a wicked mare of darkness, Nightmare Moon. Crucially, it is Luna's bitterness, her harmatia, not an external force which makes her Nightmare Moon. However, with the introduction of the Nightmare Forces, the result is entirely different. Her harmatia and subsequent fall are not her own, since it was not her fault but that of the Nightmare Forces. As a result, her anamnesis isn't truly hers either, as Nightmare Moon and Luna become divided as characters. Nightmare Moon is the result of a sentient force invading and subjugating Luna, and thus preventing her from exercising free will. Nightmare Moon is not Luna in any real sense. She is merely the body that is being possessed, and the real Nightmare Moon is the forces themselves. In this case, we could even say that the real Luna knew all about friendship and goodness, but was just overpowered by this separate sentient force, just as we know that Rarity definitely understands and values friendship, but is still overpowered in the sixth comic. Now before you start a comment along the lines of, Rarity wasn't forced to give in, she was persuaded, etc., 
I realise the suggestion of Rarity's internal conflict is present, but I still feel its use in the comics falls flat. Rarity questions her value. They wouldn't forget me, would they? I just wanted to help. Seemingly presenting the aforementioned internal struggle, born out of her own harmatia, and thus her own anamnesis will result from it, developing her character. However, in reality, she is not actually internally questioning herself at all. She is being questioned by an external entity, the Nightmare Forces. They insidiously suggest her friends may reject your gift once somebody new comes along, and beg her to stay with us and your kindness would never be taken for granted. Only then does Rarity begin to question herself, and only then does she start to fall. More damagingly still is the emphasis of the sentience of the Nightmare Forces, implicit in Larry saying, our offer, rather than my offer. This means that although we may accept Rarity's choice to give in to the Nightmare Forces itself was her own, all the subsequent choices she makes as Nightmare Rarity, and hence the choices Luna made as Nightmare Moon, are not their own, since the demonstrated sentience of the Nightmare Forces supersedes their free will. As I have argued previously, this means that the introduction of the Nightmare Forces prevents the characters developing through their own mistakes and resultant anamnesis, because it transplants the character Rarity or Luna with the character Nightmare Forces. This is backed up by the seventh comic, wherein Nightmare Rarity talks about Rarity as a separate entity. She says, Rarity was so eager to help, and she had a deep, dark secret, thus showing Rarity to not be the character making decisions, nor developing as a character, and suggesting the same of Luna as Nightmare Moon. This is again in stark contrast to the evidence of the show, as in Lunar Eclipsed, the princess is shown to be capable of transforming into the Nightmare Moon form, without an accompanying force to help her to do so. It is her own body and her own darkness which she has overcome. Thus, to conclude, the Nightmare Forces plot device has allowed the comics an interesting dramatic situation, in terms of the role reversal of a main heroine becoming a villain. But in doing so, has robbed Luna of the most defining elements of her character by replacing her full and anamnesis with a possession story, meaning Luna and Nightmare Moon become disconnected and resulting in the character of Luna never developing at all. Meanwhile, the subsequent fall of Rarity is similarly crippled, structurally speaking, leaving Rarity none the wiser for the experience. Thanks for watching my first attempt at Pony Analysis. I hope you enjoyed it, even if you didn't necessarily agree with my assessment. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the matter, and in particular the view of Brony Curious, since he managed to successfully predict the Nightmare Force's existence by suggesting what he called an as-of-yet unexplained dark power as being the reason for Luna's corruption in his video Random Thought, Is There a Connection Between Sombra and Luna? Until then, cheerio from England, and uh, have a good day. Nights of Fury out. Try your